Hey guys, welcome. This is Treylock, and in keeping with my promise to myself of making one tutorial video a day, here's my daily tutorial video, um, just so that you don't think I make all of them in Russian. Um, today's tutorial is going to focus on references, and um, you'll see what they are. If you watch the tutorial on pointers, this is uh, this is sort of like uh, a little a little more about pointers but in a different light this is not pointers this is references so uh, what I mean exactly by that I'll tell you in a second uh, so hopefully you should have some idea of what a struct is or a class is and if you don't please watch tutorial 8 um, because I'm just gonna use it here to demonstrate references and uh, sort of why they're useful um, and then so I'm going to assume you know what a struct is. Uh, let's make a struct called student and make this struct have um, so all the data members are public and we'll have an age, we'll have um, height, uh, int weight, we'll have um, a string that represents the name and std string uh, job. So this is sort of what I did in my Russian tutorial. Um, but all I'm going to do here is show you the difference uh, on the execution level of the program between uh, passing a something into a function by reference and passing the object itself into a function. So let's declare a function, and the function is going to be just simply is adult, and the queue is here um, just to tell me that this function returns a boolean. You don't have to actually put uh, a queue there. I just like to put it there so that I know uh, what the function returns. Uh, and so here is my um, is adult queue. Uh, I'm going to as a parameter to this punk function I'm gonna pass a student and the student is gonna be um, we're, we'll just call him s and the function is gonna be really simple it's a, it's a trivial function uh, all we're gonna do is check if uh, s dot age so if the age of the student uh, is greater than 18 then we'll return true uh, else we'll just return false it's it's really really simple and the, the point I want to demonstrate with this function, uh, let me just zoom out a little, uh, sorry, zoom out, god dang it, zoom out a little, a little, a little bit, please, oh, there we go, uh, so that I can fit everything on the screen. Uh, the point I want to demonstrate with this function is uh, passing by reference versus passing by value. So let's first see passing by value. This is, I'm passing student s into the function by value. Let's call this function. Uh, first of all, let's create a student. Yep. Uh, create a student, uh, which is going to be, our student's going to be um, Bob. Bob is going to be our student. And we're going to make him 25 years old. A height of, uh, let's say, 70 inches. Weight of 100, uh, I don't know, 160 pounds name name is going to be Bob and uh, the job is going to be mm, programmer he's going to be a programmer okay so now we have our student our uh, student whose name is Bob and who has these the following properties um, now that we have uh, Bob we can pass um, we can print out to the screen uh, Bob um, is right uh, Bob is or isn't an adult and uh, how, how we'll determine it is very simple uh, if is uh, if um, not is adult Q of uh, Bob so if he's not an adult right we, we pass Bob into the function then we'll print out the keyword not um, and if and then we just print out an adult so basically mm, 
and adult. The two versions that this program could take is if he's not an adult, if this uh, section of the code not is adult Q Bob returns true, then we're going to print out the not and uh, again print out an adult. So we're going to print out Bob is not an adult. If this, uh, if he is an adult, then this section is going to be ignored, right? And we're just going to print Bob is an adult. Uh, and very simple. That's that's pretty much it. Let's save it. Um, now that we've saved the file, we can compile it. And instead of uh, make, we'll just do what's this called? Pointers.cpp. Oops, pointers.cpp. Uh, minus g for debugging symbols minus output pointers um, so compilation is finished successfully uh, and uh, what we're going to do now is just look at how this program executes and to do that we're going to fire up gdb our debugger boom and yep and here is our gdb stack uh, in the top uh, top left we have our GDB command line we have our program here and we have our registers our local variables uh, here are our registers here are our local variables we have a bunch of um, things we can do here at the top this is Emacs by the way um, we have the threads the break breakpoints and the stack so let's just fire up um, without setting any uh, streak uh, I mean start without setting any breakpoints enter and we hit the, the first instruction line and so we have uh, a student called Bob and uh, we can actually probably we can shift this a little bit make it a little bit larger so that we can see uh, the temporary breakpoint is at line 18 which is in the main function so now we um, execute we can print Bob but um, Bob is just gonna be um, is going to be an empty student for now. Uh, he's not going to have any data because we haven't we haven't really executed. See, age contains some random number because we haven't uh, initialized it. It's it's made the variable but hasn't done anything yet. Um, so now we type in next to step to the next instruction. See that the the little pointer he right here moved down, and we've executed the first instruction, which is assigns these values to Bob. So now, if we print Bob, uh, we should see uh, here, we should see age equals 25, height equals 70, weight equals 160, and then we have all this stuff, which is, uh, uh, which are our strings. Um, and you see programmer, you see Bob, etc. Um, so now I'm going to uh, call next again, because... Uh, it's just gonna print out Bob is, but it doesn't really print it out yet. Um, it prints it out later because uh, what this does is puts it in a buffer, and then at the end it flushes the buffer. But it doesn't flush the buffer yet. It flushes it um, at the end of the program. So th that's a little a little trick. Um, you could put a std flush there. So it's it's useful to sometimes step through your programs with a GDB a debugger to see how your program is actually executing. So now instead of uh, hitting next, which would step over this function, uh, it would basically execute this function and step to the next line of code. We're going to say step, which will step into the function. Uh, and see uh, here our call stack got incremented because we stepped into the function. Uh, and here we, we jump to the struct student uh, because we're passing the student. So it jumped to student to check what, what the struct is that is passing to adult Q. Uh, and now we step, and now we're in the function adult Q. Uh, sorry, let's scroll to the function. Um, and now we're back here. Uh, we're at the first instruction if sh is greater than 18. But the thing I wanted to show you is actually um, right now uh, you see that it called is adult Q with s equals dot dot dot. S is the student. Now, if I print s, I get the same student, uh, the student data that we had before, and the size of the student we can say print size of uh, s, 
and it will show us 32 bytes. 32 uh, bytes is the size of the struct that we've constructed with all that with all, all those number variables, right? Uh, and we're passing 32 bytes to the isdel queue function, uh, which is perfectly okay. Uh, there's no problem with that. Um, but the, the 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 problem is imagine if our struct here which is called student or we could uh, we could could have had it be a class it doesn't really matter um, if, imagine if it wasn't 32 bytes if it was a thousand bytes if it was uh, 2,000 bytes 3,000 bytes etc or even larger right the problem with that is that we're going to be shuffling memory around um, by calling this function and passing in something that's uh, pretty large what the compiler has to do uh, not the compiler the, the the operating system has to do when you do that it has to mem copy which means just take a block of memory where the student is stored and actually copy it byte for byte into another um, into another region which is separate which is going to be used in the function the this this s uh, is going to be local to the function uh, it's not going to be the same s that we have in main it's going to be a different s uh, a copy of the the other one so we're basically copying the whole object we're copying 32 bytes into the function and then we're executing the function with that new object so if the student struct is five megabytes we're copying five megabytes uh, now imagine the student struct is not five megabytes, but five kilobytes, a more realistic size, or maybe even one kilobyte. But um, you could say, well, what's the matter with passing one kilobyte to a function? And it's it's not going to be crucial. It's it's going to be more important on smaller systems. But imagine you're calling this function in a loop, and you're not calling it once. You're calling it uh, a thousand times, two thousand times, ten thousand times. I don't know. Imagine your your uh, struct is not a student but a fraction with some functions and some um, variables, and you need to exponentiate this function or something multiple times, ten thousand times. Uh, that's when where the overhead of that uh, of copying all that memory for the function call is gonna actually kick in, and it's gonna be pretty large. Uh, and uh, at some point it might even uh, affect inlining the function and we'll talk about inlining at uh, another point. So uh, basically what I wanted to tell you is the size of s which is 32 um, and then we, we can just step through the function we obviously we got get to the return true because he's 25 uh, next um, and then we get to the end of the function and we get to an adult and now we have uh, at the end um, we go back to the beginning where it uh, allocated Bob, so it has to delete Bob now. Uh, see, it deleted Bob. If you if you noticed here, uh, the Bob local was removed, and then at the end, um, here is the the end of our program, um, and it printed out finally the buffered string. Bob is an adult, and the program exited normally. Um, so now. Um, this this was a quick demonstration of our program. Um, uh, let's see, with the uh, passing by value. Now let's put an ampersand here, and now suddenly we're not passing by value anymore, but we're passing by reference. Passing by reference means we don't make a copy of the object, but this s refers to the same object that we created here. So what we're actually doing is passing the memory address of the Bob object into the function. And to assert that we're not going to change the object that we're passing into the function, we do a thing called, uh, we put a const there, const student reference s. And so what that does is just pass the memory address and say, you cannot modify what lies at this memory address, but you can read it. Um, and now we're going to compile it again. Um, yep, and the compilation is finished, and now we're going to fire up GDB, um, and again we're back at our program, we're going to type start, we're going to type, um, which line is this, this is line, uh, which, line, gosh, 12, 
So we're going to type in break 12 to break at line 12 um, and continue to continue. And now we're, we're, we stopped at this break point that we've assigned. Um, and again, we're over here. We've called is adult Q with s equals dot dot dot. So let's actually print out what s equals. Um, and we get again the same uh, the same thing we got last time but now it's it's a little bit different because it's a const student reference here it is as you can see uh, it's casting this memory address into a const student reference so it's saying to the program uh, to the operating system that at this memory address read the bytes as though uh, the bytes are laid out uh, by the template that's provided there by the student struct and uh, with all these, and then it reads the bytes, uh, referring to the student template, the, the struct template, it reads the bytes at that memory location, and it finds age equals 25, blah, 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 as always. So now, what we, the, the crucial part is, let's print out the size of S. And the size of S is not 32 anymore, it's 8. Why is it 8? Because 8 is no, uh, because S is no longer a student struct s is just a pointer in memory the student is still uh, at the same place in memory that it always was but what we did is we passed in the location of that that student struct and we said um, here here's a bunch of bytes we don't really care what those bytes are but we here's a, a prototype for reading these bytes called the student and we know that these bytes are laid out just like the, the we defined them in struct student so all we're doing is passing 8 bytes, and no matter how large our class student is, we're still passing 8 bytes, which uh, the 8 bytes tell us where in memory it is, how, in, how is it laid out, this basically the student prototype, and uh, how, how large the block is. So in those 8 bytes, we can describe a, a struct of any arbitrary size uh, by passing a reference. So that, that is the true uh, power of passing references versus... Uh, the the actual the actual thing quote unquote so now we can step through um, and basically continue until the end of the function and then it says Bob is an adult program exited normally um, and if you really want to see the program execute uh, if Bob is not an adult just to I don't know to check if it works um, God dang it. What is what is going on? Wah, wah, wah. Okay. I don't know what this autocomplete is doing, but um let's delete this and type in fifteen. Save the file. Um compile it. Yep, and now um, we can execute a shell command and we just execute pointers. And the output, see the, they put the output in the buffer. Bob is not an adult. If you want to see. Um, uh, da, 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 okay, we're not gonna, not gonna have it that way, but basically the, the output is Bob is not an adult. Uh, so. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, I mean, I, I can probably I can close Emacs. Uh, there we go. Uh, yes. If I close Emacs, we can now run pointers and see that Bob is not an adult. And then next time I should fire up Emacs uh, uh, so that it's an independent process. But anyways, this was a quick demonstration of the difference between passing by value and passing by reference and I hope it has slightly uh, enlightened you to the the inner workings of uh, passing by value versus passing by reference and why you should pass by reference um, over passing by value especially with structs and classes and large things um, and hopefully mm, I'll have more videos forthcoming uh, so I look forward to seeing you guys again and have a great rest of the day. Good night.